I'm Michael Hitchborn, and this is the American Life League Report. In our last video report, we told you about how Obamacare Bill H.R. 3200 sneaks in provisions for abortion. Well, now the big hullabaloo is over the question, does end-of-life care translate as euthanasia? Since the answer to this question apparently isn't above his pay grade, we'll let Obama provide the answer. During a 2008 interview, Greg Nelson of the Medford Mail Tribune asked Obama a couple of other issues of interest to Oregonians involve initiatives passed by the voters, physician-assisted suicide and medical marijuana. Do you support those two concepts? Obama's answer? I think that the people of Oregon did a service for the country in recognizing that as the population gets older, we've got to think about issues of end-of-life care. Just let that sink in for a moment. Obama was asked about physician-assisted suicide. He answered by mentioning the elderly and end-of-life care. In 1999, the U.S. House of Representatives passed H.R. 2260, the Pain Relief Promotion Act. The act is a ban on the use of drugs for physician-assisted suicide. In essence, it does not allow doctors to give lethal prescriptions to terminally ill patients. But guess what? Henry Waxman, the sponsor for H.R. 3200, and his co-sponsors, John Dingell, George Miller, Peter Stark, and Frank Pallone, all voted against the ban. Because they know full well that Americans deplore abortion and euthanasia, they have to hide their intentions with linguistic acrobatics, which is why those words do not appear in the bill. But remember, Obama and his cronies are in favor of physician-assisted suicide and, in fact, equate it with the elderly and end-of-life issues. Let's take a look at how Section 1233 works. Entitled Advanced Care Planning Consultation, Section 1233 amends the Social Security Act to include a planning session every five years regarding end-of-life care. Every five years, an advanced care planning practitioner is going to sit grandma down to tell her about her end-of-life options. He'll tell her about things like living wills, the continuum of end-of-life services, and orders regarding life-sustaining treatment or similar orders, which all boil down to one question. How do you want to die? Grandma will be told that in the event she is without a detectable pulse or stops breathing, she can determine the intensity of medical intervention she wants for things like CPR, ventilators, antibiotics, and even nutrition and hydration. So your grandma can now be dehydrated to death like Terry Schiavo was. But that's not all. This simple little consultation isn't just between grandma and her doctor. Page 428 says that the program for life-sustaining treatment is a program that is guided by a coalition of stakeholders. Stakeholders? The word stakeholders is mentioned 52 times throughout the bill referring to interested parties who guide various policies on health care provisions, costs, and so forth. In other words, cost is going to very much be a factor in guiding grandma on the best course of action. But don't take my word for it, look at the bill. Page 426 says, an explanation of orders regarding life-sustaining treatment or similar orders shall include reasons why the development of orders is beneficial to the individual and the individual's family, and the reasons why such orders should be updated periodically as the health of the individual changes. Think about this. As your health changes, you need to update your orders in a way that is beneficial to you and your family. That can only mean money. If your treatments are costing too much for your family, how did Obama put it? Maybe you're better off uh, not having the surgery, but taking uh, the painkiller. And remember that Trojan Horse Commission I told you about in the last video report? The one that will determine the basic coverage all health care plans will have? Everything I just explained here is subject to that. This bill already legalizes euthanasia by agreeing to deny food and water to patients and works with states where physician-assisted suicide is already legal. But if the culture of death succeeds in legalizing other methods, future end-of-life consultations will include those in the explanations as well. Now look, we haven't even covered 1% of the bill, and you can already see how bad it is. But remember, Obama and Clinton equate physician-assisted suicide with end-of-life issues just like those covered in the bill. And the bill's sponsors voted against banning physician-assisted suicide. 
H.R. 3200 was created and is being pushed by agents of the culture of death. And when they say that abortion and euthanasia are not in the bill, they are lying to you. They have an agenda and they are trying to fulfill it. Don't let them. Call your congressman, write them letters, and demand that they run this bill through the shredder. For American Life League, I'm Michael Hitchborn.